Hello everyone, and welcome back to Agriculture Insight. Sugar is the most familiar sweetener in our lives. But have you ever wondered how sugar is made? Sugar cane is the raw material that creates sugar. The process of making sugar is complex. From growing and harvesting sugar cane to processing it in factories. Join us as we visit the lush sugar cane fields in the U.S., where tall sugar cane stalks are ready for harvest. In 2023, the U.S. produced millions of tons of sugar cane, significantly contributing to the national economy and enriching our daily lives with sugar products. Despite harsh natural conditions like droughts and floods, American farmers can harvest an impressive amount of sugar cane with high efficiency thanks to their hard work and modern agricultural technology. Today, we'll explore vast sugar cane farms in Louisiana and Florida, following the farmers from planting to harvest learning about modern farming technologies and understanding the sugar production process in factories. Let's get started. Sugarcane thrives in warm climates, which is why it is predominantly grown in states like Louisiana, Florida, and Texas. Farmers begin the sugarcane planting season each spring. Sugarcane is planted using sections of the stalk cut into pieces, each about 12 to 18 inches long containing three to four buds. To select high-quality sugarcane varieties, scientists conduct in-depth research in laboratories, performing DNA tests and chemical experiments to identify unique characteristics of each variety. From these studies, the best potential sugarcane varieties are selected for cultivation. After each growing season, the soil becomes depleted. It needs to be tilled and loosened to ensure good drainage and facilitate easy root development. Farmers use tractors and specialized plowing equipment, each capable of tilling several hectares of land per day. This process also helps break up the hard soil structure, allowing the roots of the sugarcane to spread and grow more effectively. Large farms typically plant sugarcane in straight rows to facilitate care and harvesting. Therefore, they use machinery to mark parallel straight furrows for planting the sugarcane. Once the furrows are made, a sugarcane planter equipped with sugarcane seedlings in a container moves straight along these pre-marked furrows. The automatic sugarcane planter places the cane sets into the prepared furrows at a depth of 1 to 1.5 meters. The sets are laid horizontally or at an angle, and then the soil is gently filled back in to protect the sets and maintain moisture for germination. After planting on the farm, key activities to ensure the growth of the sugarcane include regular watering, weeding, and fertilization. Sugarcane is a water-intensive crop, especially during its initial growth stages. There are several irrigation systems suitable for sugarcane farms, including drip irrigation, sprinkler systems, and flood irrigation, with drip irrigation being the most popular in modern sugarcane farms due to its efficiency and water conservation. The drip irrigation system uses main water lines that branch out into smaller tubes running along the sugarcane rows. These branches are equipped with emitters placed at regular intervals, typically close to the sugarcane roots. Water is pumped through these tubes and drips directly onto the soil around the roots, providing just enough water without causing waterlogging. This method allows sugarcane roots to absorb water quickly and efficiently. The sprinkler system consists of large water pipes with sprinkler heads spaced along the field, covering a large area. Water is pumped through these sprinklers, creating a spray that falls over the sugarcane field like natural rain. Sprinkler systems can be easily moved to different areas of the field, providing flexibility in watering different sections of the sugarcane crop. Alongside irrigation, fertilization is an essential process for sugarcane cultivation. The common types of fertilizer used for sugarcane contain high levels of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. American farmers use modern machinery to apply fertilizer over large areas, often in a liquid form that allows the sugar cane to easily absorb nutrients through its leaves or roots. The machinery moves along the rows of sugar cane, spraying the fertilizer in a fine mist. Thanks to this automated and modern fertilization process, farmers can optimize the efficiency and quality of the sugar cane, promoting healthy growth and high yields. Weeds can quickly grow alongside sugar cane, competing for nutrients. Farmers use modern weeders equipped with cutting blades or rotating brushes that trim close to the ground without harming the sugarcane. About a year after planting, 
the sugarcane is ready for harvest. Before harvesting, farmers often burn the sugarcane right on the farm. This burning is intended to remove dry leaves and unnecessary tops, making the harvest easier and more efficient. Dry leaves and weeds can cover the sugarcane stalks, obstructing machinery and slowing down the harvesting process. The fire burns off the outer leaf layer, leaving behind clean stalks and reducing the volume of unnecessary material to transport. This not only saves costs and time, but also makes the milling process at the factory more efficient as it focuses on the sugar-rich stalks. However, this method is currently under strict regulation due to its contribution to air pollution and environmental impact. Burning sugarcane has almost disappeared because modern machines can easily harvest sugarcane without much human intervention. First, the sugarcane harvesters are precisely adjusted to cut as close to the ground as possible, ensuring that the entire sugar-rich stalk is harvested. As the harvester moves along the sugarcane rows, its sharp blades continuously operate, neatly cutting each cane at the base and lifting the stalks onto an automated conveyor belt. Unnecessary leaves and tops are removed right on the machine and returned to the soil in the field, reducing the need for post-harvest processing. Next, the harvested sugarcane stalks are cut into shorter sections ready for transport. These segments are moved into the large holding compartment of the harvester, then transferred to waiting trucks on the edge of the field ready for the journey to the processing plant. All these steps, from cutting and cleaning to collection, are carried out continuously and precisely thanks to the power of modern technology. After harvesting, sugarcane is transported to the sugar factory by truck or in some places by train. The sugar production process at the factory is complex and involves multiple steps to extract, refine, and crystallize sugar from the sugarcane. Sugarcane is typically transported to the factory immediately after harvesting to prevent loss of water and sweetness. Samples of sugarcane juice from different farms are separately collected and analyzed in an on-site laboratory to determine the sugar content. The cane undergoes a washing system to remove soil, dust, and other impurities attached to the stalks. Next steps typically include crushing and pressing the chopped cane to extract the sugary juice. The chopped sugar cane is fed into large capacity juicers to extract the sugar cane juice. These juicers typically consist of several heavy rollers that crush and press the cane to squeeze out the juice. After the extraction process, the leftover fibrous material, known as bagasse, is removed. This bagasse is utilized for various purposes, such as fuel, paper production, and the manufacture of biodegradable products like plates and utensils. The freshly extracted sugarcane juice typically contains impurities and suspended fibers. To clarify the juice, lime is added to precipitate these non-soluble impurities, enhancing the purity of the sugarcane juice after chemical treatment. The clarified sugarcane juice is heated in evaporation pans to vaporize water, resulting in a more concentrated sugar solution. This process occurs in several stages, transforming from a dilute solution to a thicker one. The concentrated juice turns a pale yellow and becomes more viscous. To initiate crystallization, a small amount of sugar seed crystals is added to the concentrated sugarcane juice. The solution is gradually cooled, allowing sugar to start crystallizing. This crystallization process can take several hours. After crystallization, the mixture is placed in a centrifuge to separate the sugar crystals from the molasses. The centrifuge spins at high speed, collecting the sugar crystals in the middle while the molasses flows out. The sugar, still damp from separation, is sent to a drying system to fully dry, preventing the crystals from sticking together and extending shelf life. Once dried, the sugar is sorted and packaged into bags or sacks for transport and consumption. Some factories utilize automatic packaging systems, which expedite the packaging process and ensure accuracy. Before leaving the factory, the sugar undergoes thorough quality checks to ensure it meets standards for sweetness, purity, and granule size. Samples are analyzed in a laboratory to guarantee the highest quality for the factory's products. The process above yields raw sugar crystals that are off-white. To achieve pure white sugar, a decolorization step is required. 
The solution for decolorizing is created by dissolving the raw, refined sugar in boiling water at 80 degrees Celsius. This clear solution is then heated and passed through sand and gravel filters before moving through activated carbon columns. Following this, it is centrifuged again to remove color, resulting in pure white sugar crystals. After the juice extraction, sugarcane bagasse becomes an ideal material for producing biodegradable products such as plates, bowls, cups, and other food containers, offering an eco-friendly alternative to single-use plastics. The bagasse is processed to remove impurities, then cooked into a pulp. This pulp is pressed into various shapes like plates, bowls, or food trays. Products made from sugarcane bagasse are not only environmentally friendly but also biodegradable, significantly reducing plastic waste. Additionally, bagasse is used as livestock feed, especially for cattle. Rough bagasse is typically fermented for about two months, similar to silage corn making it easier for livestock to digest and reducing feed costs for farmers. Now you have a comprehensive overview of how white sugar is produced from sugar cane. From the planting and care stages, through the harvesting of sugar cane, to the meticulous processing in the factory. It's a long journey filled with dedication and effort, not only from the farmers, but also from the workers and technicians at the factory, ensuring the delivery of pure, high-quality sugar. So next time you use a spoonful of sugar to make tea, bake, or cook, remember the hard work and detailed process behind it. Thank you for joining me in exploring this content. If you have any questions or comments, please share them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel to not miss out on more fascinating stories about agriculture and production. Goodbye, and see you in the next video.